As we all take our seats in the Holy Ghost, Amen. The Lord said, "There is someone here." He said, "On this very tomorrow, which is Thursday, I will give you a reason for a big laughter." And the Lord said, "There is someone here. He said, buy your contract." He said, "Don't worry. Next week you will turn around and rejoice." <laughs> you will turn around and rejoice because you are that person I think your human should be the loudest <laughs> Tuesday is somebody's day of celebrations if that is you I think your hallelujah should be the loudest in the house <laughs> hallelujah father we give you all the praise sweet holy spirit of God thank you for ministering tonight I see somebody watching me you are concerned about your job status Lord said, I should let you know that he has gone into action to turn around that table in your hands right now. Where they have told you there is no job. Where they have told you that you cannot do any better than this. Where the economy has spoken to you that you have no other right than to stay on this level. Lord said, I should let you know I've broken the backbone right now of that statement levied on your life. He said, and there is a release for advancement. Oh, glory be to God. If you are that person, I think your human should be the loudest in the house. You're watching me online. I think your human should be the loudest where you are. <laughs> Glory be to God in the highest. Come on, tell somebody my testimony is full. Say, my joy is here. In the name of Jesus. Say it again. I got bigger joy. Say, I got bigger grace. Say, my song is a new song. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God in the highest. We well, thank the Lord that we have been talking on prayers. The effective foundation or the foundation for effective faith. Prayers, the foundation for effective faith. Prayers, the foundation for effective faith. Now listen everybody under the sound of my voice. By the grace of God, accept the Holy Spirit. Still want us to go further. We might be bringing this particular series to a close today. And by the Spirit of God, we'll be talking more or looking more in the direction of the releasing of your faith. Glory be to God. The releasing of what? Of your faith. We have been looking at, ladies and gentlemen, all the concomitants that come together to make it happen. Jollof rice is no jollof rice if some certain things are not there. Am I right? Tomatoes has to be there. Am I right? You got to have some curry there. Am I right? Then you're going to have some, is it some little oil, right? Am I right? And then we're going to have, what else do you have there? Huh? I can't hear you. Chicken, jello rice. Huh? Thai and curry. Okay, mama, you, you, you're in the spirit, man. Come on, tell somebody. <laughs> Several ingredients come together to make it jello rice. Now, you need to understand, ladies and gentlemen, that's the same way we have been looking at several things that come together, more especially on the platform of prayers. We have considered so many things. We've considered so many things from the first of this series to now. I, I think we're on series nine now. Ladies and gentlemen, we need to go through it again and again. You go on retreat, you can go on this series. You just keep going through it again and again. Now, you would notice that what we are teaching today may just be uh, uh, not to elaborate when it comes to releasing faith. Now, it's elaborate. What I mean is that we are not taking another hit series to be able to talk on releasing faith. And then, <laughs> somebody will be wondering, but you took so much to talk on other things that can make it happen. Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, those are the things that make it happen. When you look at killing an animal, you said, oh, the bullet entered the animal and killed the animal. But you agree with me, it's not about the bullet. Because if the bullet is in your hand, your bullet in itself cannot kill an animal. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But several things have to come together to make the bullet effective. Am I talking to somebody here? You need to have a gun. Am I right? And possibly if it is the local gun, then you need to have some gunpowder. Am I right? Then you need to have the cap with which 
you know, you cap the area that when you pull the trigger, the trigger will strike that thing on top of the gun like this. And, it, it, and then you need to have some matches, you know, pr there so that it produces some fire spark. And when the gunpowder sees <laughs> fire, when it sees any spark, it explodes. Am I right? The explosion is what forces the bullets out. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you, you understand the mechanism that, please understand, before the bullet can be effective to kill, so many things have to be in place. Am I talking to somebody here? And that is what we have been looking at on the foundation of prayers. Glory be to God in the highest. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the confidence that there are men and women under the sound of my voice, that their faiths are always bringing down Goliath. I mean, I have the confidence that people here carry the faith that moves the mountain. They carry the faith that can shake the world for Jesus. And they carry the faith that can cause into manifestation their desires at any time. Come on, tell somebody, I know who I am. I carry the special faith of God. Say the faith is located in my spirit. I carry faith in my heart. Glory be to God in the highest. So ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says we have in the same spirit of faith. Am I right? So we are not about to get it. We got it already. Come on, tell somebody, I got a faith. I got a bullet. Now I have learned on how to release the bullet. Am I right? And that is on the foundation of uh, prayers. Glory be to God in the highest. So you see, ladies and gentlemen, there is a way you can set your gun that it can go some 100 miles. When it is a pistol, a pistol at times goes like some 100 miles. When you are talking of AK-47, you can set it to go 400 miles. You can set it to go 1,000 miles. You can set it to go 1,500, 1,600 miles. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you see, <laughs> it is your setting. If you set it to go 100 miles, after 100 miles, the bullet drops. It becomes ineffective. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? But when you set it to go 1,600 miles, ladies and gentlemen, that is to say that it will go beyond a kilo, I mean, beyond a kilo, in fact, beyond two, two kilometers. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It will just be going and going and going and going and going. I mean, it will, uh, uh, what am I talking about? I mean, I'm, uh, uh, sorry, if you set it to go um, 2,000 meters, 1,600 meters, it will just keep going like that. So what am I, what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? It depends on how you set it. Do you understand? So there is a way somebody's bullet can go some 100 meters and then drops. And somebody's bullet, ladies and gentlemen, is covering some 10,000 meters. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? It's all coming from, ladies and gentlemen, where it is fired. So the effectiveness of your faith is a product of where it is fired. I think somebody needs to write that now. The effectiveness of your faith is a product of what is, is where it is fired. And that is why when we are talking about releasing faith, ladies and gentlemen, it starts from where it is fired. And I must let you know, ladies and gentlemen, when it is weak, when it is, if I carry a bullet now and I throw it at Pastosi with my hand, bass, you can be very sure that bullet can't kill him. It cannot what? It can't kill him. Do you agree with me? Because I'm training with my hand. Am I right? He cannot kill him. Excuse me, please. He cannot kill him. But let me get a, a powerful gun to fire it. Ladies and gentlemen, he can scatter anything. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen. God is saying something very important to you and I today. That where, how our faith is, the strength of our faith matters in everything we do. Now a lot of times, ladies and gentlemen, we go through a lot in this world that are discouraging factors. Jesus said in John chapter number 16 and verse 32, he said, this world you will see tribulations. That is to say that in this world, ladies and gentlemen, men and women are exposed to discouragements. Things come to us at times that wants to draw us back. Things come to us at times that want to make, ladies and gentlemen, the productivity of our faith and of our life, ladies and gentlemen, very, 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 very minor. He wants to make sure that, ladies and gentlemen, the more you prepare to get some things, the more you, you are faced with uh, discouraging and dispiriting factors. And then before you know what is happening, ladies and gentlemen, weakness sets on your face. You begin to see uh, a lot of things to consider. We all know that we all grew up in this world. We were trained in this world. Education, for instance, can be what I, what I call one of the greatest limitations of faith. Because when you are educated, when you are a medical doctor, for instance, I've spoken with them a lot of times. When you are talking about, you know, some certain things happen, they are looking at you like, ah, is that possible? The others I'm talking about, you know, because they know that, you see, this is how the body functions. This, this thing is, is not possible. This one is this. This one. And a lot of times, I've prayed for medical doctors, and they have received miracles. And then they came, one of them came, he said, he said, I said, oh, I wish to be a doctor. 
you know, when I was young. And he wanted to say, ah, he said, you are now a doctor. He said, can you imagine? You are the one ministering to me now and I'm getting my miracle. <laughs> Is somebody catch I'm talking about? So you see, a lot of times, our education can be against, you know, our faith. The Bible says, you know, avoid the argument of science, you know, falsely so-called. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm talking about. Because science will prove some certain things that is impossible. You see, the heart has been projected to be going around the sun, revolving around the sun, rotating on its axis. And then you now hear a Joshua say, heart stay, and the sun, I mean, sun stay. And uh, how is that possible? You see, that is against, you know, <laughs> the movement, you know, of celestial bodies. You know, that is uh, 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 against this, that's against that. That is against this theory, that's against... You see, you can have a whole lot even though to say against it. Do you understand what I'm talking about? You may have a lot of theories and principles to use against it. But listen, your education, if you're not very careful, does not align with what God is saying. That is why we should not limit ourselves to the natural world when we are walking in faith. The natural world will always give you considerations. Now, in Romans chapter number 4, for instance, the Bible said, verses 18 and 19, the Bible says, Abraham, be not weak in faith. He did not consider his own body now dead. Neither did he consider the deadness of Sarah's womb. So what does weak faith does? The Bible, I mean do rather. The Bible says weak faith considers. You begin to look at it. How can I buy a car? Seeing that I only have one naira in my pocket. Who told you you have one naira in your pocket? Who told you that car is not purchasable? Uh, purchasable. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Uh, how can, how can, who told you how can? The, the Lord your God whom you serve is more than able to buy anything for you. He's more than able to do it with or without a dime in your pocket. Now you see, they have taught us in this world that you cut your coat according to your size. So if what you have is 5,000 naira, you're going to live by 5,000 naira. Am I talking to somebody here? That's what the worldly system has taught us. But you see, when you cross over to faith, please understand, the word of God begins to teach you that it is not, ladies and gentlemen, what your bank account is saying, that is your eventual work. Ladies and gentlemen, your what is the, the value of the blood of Jesus? Because you have been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? And that blood is precious, ladies and gentlemen, is priceless. That is to say there is nothing you want, ladies and gentlemen, that you cannot get. Except the blood of Jesus cannot afford, that is when it cannot come to you. Am I talking to somebody? In natural fact, all that the Father has is yours. Oh yes, the word of God tells us, First Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse 21, that all things are yours. So if they are mine, then I can take the step of faith and acquire it. Now tell Pastor Sipras, say, let's go and buy chairs. And then we'll go. And on the way, we'll price everything. And then the says, I say, okay, I'm coming to pay by Monday. And I, I'll be walking out with Pastor. I say, Pastor, I don't have this money. But I show you how faith works. <laughs> and that same Monday, ladies and gentlemen, all the money is on ground. And then we we'll go there, we we'll pick the chairs. Do you get what I'm talking about? And that has happened again and again and again and again countless of times. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So you see, when I set myself, considering my bank account, I'm setting a limitation on my faith. Oh, come on, am I talking to somebody here? So the Bible says, Abraham, being not weak in faith, he did not consider his own body now dead. <laughs> I remember when I applied to Harvard University, I was telling one of my, you know, uh, beautiful daughters then, and then uh, an handsome friend of mine, Pastor Adeke, we all, a number of us know Reverend Adeke, I told them that I applied to Harvard. You know, I remember the first thing all of them said to me. They said, where are you going to get the money to go? There was, I don't think there was anybody that I told that I applied to Harvard. I let them just a majority that, that didn't ask me that question. Where are you going to get the money? I said, God told me to apply. God's going to sponsor it. Everybody kept saying, where are you going to get the money? And Harvard said, we have over 2 million applications all around the world. They only have limited spaces. So where are they going to, even going to pick you? And even if they pick you, where are you going to get money? Do you understand what I'm talking about? And when my admission letter came, I remember that day, Reverend Adeke may be listening right now. We sat down at social, um, faculty, um, faculty of Social Sciences. And I remember the day when I told the lady also that it was also in that same faculty. The lady turned like this and looked at me like this. And I said, where are you going to get the money? You know, you know that kind of high. Now, in that same faculty, ladies and gentlemen, we were when I was breaking the news to them, when the admission letter came. The first thing I saw when I opened the admission letter, I saw with delight. I said, that means they gave me admission. Because if they don't give you, you will see we regret. I don't know if you understand. That. So after I, okay, okay, they gave me admission. I was so happy. And I said, I said, this, 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 I said the, the operation is not complete until I see the scholarship package. Do you understand? What I'm so we kept exploring, exploring until we got the scholarship package. And lo and behold, full scholarship, one, with stipends <laughs> that was big enough for me to live on. 
and all of that. I mean, the thing blew me up. I said, yeah, mission accomplished. <laughs> so the day I was breaking the news to Pastor Deke and this lady, it was also in the same faculty. And they were sitting on the staircase like this. I was down. They were sitting down. So I was now talking to them. You know, the two of them just bowed their heads. Pastor Deke put his head in between his knees and he was shaking his head like this. I said, when I told you, you did not believe. You all asked me, where will I get the money? I said, and I told them, I said, against who? Abraham believed in me. I said, there was no way I could get that scholarship or anything. Could, could happen. I said, and then you, I applied when I had not even finished my year five. I was, I just finished my year four. How can you apply for masters? When you so, so, so. But God spoke to me. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So if I had considered the facts, ladies and gentlemen, I wouldn't have moved. Oh, come on, am I talking to somebody here? So weak faith is the way that is always considering facts. Many of you, ladies and gentlemen, you're always considering facts before you do anything. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, you are not a coder. You are the son of the king of kings and the lord of lords. And you have been bought, ladies and gentlemen, with the priceless blood of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, you are the most valuable commodity on the surface of the heart. You are the one that carries God himself. Ladies and gentlemen, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. The three of them resides on your inside. Ladies and gentlemen, who not told you that anybody can look at you and underestimate you based on what First Bank is saying or based on what GT Bank is saying concerning your, your account? Ladies and gentlemen, you are bigger, ladies and gentlemen, than the estimation of those banks. Friend, the what of what you carry in the realm of the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, Nigeria cannot contain it. Oh, I'm talking to somebody here. I said Nigeria cannot contain it. I pray this night in the name of Jesus that your eyes be open and you begin to see the manifestations of what you carry. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? You need to come off the realm of considerations so that power can come on your faith. And that is what prayer does, ladies and gentlemen. He strengthens the, he strengthens the God. He strengthens, he puts the God at the distance it should go. He, he strengthens, he puts capacity. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Into the God. So that the God, you see, the how far an arrow will go is determined by how far you release it from the sling. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Or from the bow. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, how far you will go is how strengthened your faith, how strengthened your inner man is that is releasing the faith. Do you understand me? So prayer does something to your spirit <laughs> and it releases the faith with terrific force. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. If your faith is weak, if you're always considering this, considering that, I got a good news for you. Just take some time and pray in tongues as we have always been encouraging ourselves within the last couple of weeks. You will see strength coming on your faith. The Bible said Jesus was talking to Peter. In Luke chapter number 22, starting from verse 31. He said, Peter, Peter, the devil has desired to sift you as wheat. <laughs> the Lord told me there is somebody here. I mean, there is somebody in this ministry. Whether you are watching now or you are going to watch this service hereafter, the enemy has been hovering over your life to terminate you. The Lord said, I should tell you, you told me this yesterday. It was it yesterday or two days ago? The Lord said, I should tell you, you will live and not die. <laughs> Whatever the enemy is doing is reverse back to the head of the enemies. You will live and you will do well on the heart. If you are that person, lift up holy hands and shout, I will live and not die. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? The Bible made us to understand very strategically. Luke chapter 22, verse 31, Jesus speaking to Peter. He said, Peter, he said, the enemy has desired to sift you as wheat. That means Satan has a desire for you. And his desire is not in, I mean, it's not in good. You know, the Bible says in John chapter number 10, verse 10, he said, The thief cometh not but to steal, kill, and destroy. So, so the enemy has desired to destroy your life and destiny. But I have prayed for you that your faith fails not. And when you are strengthened, he said, When you are converted, make sure you strengthen your brethren. What is he trying to say? A time is coming when you will face the weakness of faith that allows the enemy to step in into your life. And then that time came, you know, this was towards the Gestiman experience. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Uh, from verse 20, 41, Jesus started praying at Gestiman. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And that same, from Gestiman, he was arrested. And that same night, the, the fate of Peter was tempted. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Ah, oh, God, you are one of them. He wa if he's a bold man, you will see Peter speaking. His fate was, before the Sanhedrin was strengthened, he was telling them, so you killed him. But a little girl, the Bible says, said unto Peter, you, 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 your voice betrayed you. You are one of them. Peter said, I said, I don't know him. You don't understand. What's the problem? Why can't you just believe what I'm saying? I say, I'm not connected to him at all. I don't know him from anywhere. A master that fed him for three and a half years. 
You know what I'm talking about? He denied him completely. He said, I don't know him at all. And he said, for this thing not to happen, Jesus told them, eh? verse 40, 40, 44, 45. After Jesus prayed for an hour, he went to meet them. He said, pray, lest you fall into trials. Ah, Peter said, oh God, just, he, you, know, you know he had a sword in his hand. He touched, he said, the sword is there. He said, go, you are still in power. Go and go and sleep. Go, 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 go and do your own thing. And he continued sleeping again. Jesus came the second time. The third time, he said, don't bother, continue sleeping. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That thing was escapable. That means the weakness of that faith. Ladies and gentlemen, could have been addressed if he had prayed. So what prayer does is to fire your faith. So Jesus said, weakness of faith is coming on you, Peter. He said, but I have prayed for you that that faith won't fail. Do you understand? So if your faith is shaken over any project of your life, I want to marry now, your faith is shaken. I want to build my house this year, your faith is shaken. Listen to me, what you are addressing, Jesus said, I have prayed for you. That means there is something prayer can do to put strength into your faith. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? It will power strength into your faith. The Bible said in Matthew 17, of course, at uh, the month of transfiguration, when Jesus came down and that man who had a son with lunars, he came to Jesus. He said, I brought my son to your disciples, they couldn't cast out the devil. And Jesus said, Oh, yes, bring the boy, and Jesus cast out the devil. And then he told the disciples, Oh, you faithless and perverse generation, for how long will I be with you? Verse 19, the disciples asked him, Master, why couldn't we cast out the devil? Jesus still repeated it. He said, For lack of faith. He has told them, verse 18, O ye faith, verse 17, 18, O ye faith, faithless and perverse generation, it's your faithlessness that couldn't handle this. Is it not, is, I mean, they tried, it's not that they didn't have faith. They had cast out devils before. In Matthew chapter 10, he sent them out and gave them power. He came to all the clean spirit and they came back with good report. Now, this is chapter 17 now. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But you see, ladies and gentlemen, they could not sustain their faith to keep producing because they did not have what I call an effective prayer life. You know, Jesus said, when the bridegroom is around, his friends don't fast. Am I right? They don't pray. But let the bridegroom be taken away. He said, the day come when they will fast and what? And pray. So as at this time, they did not have an effective prayer life themselves. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So Jesus said, your faithless, he said, your faithlessness is what has allowed this thing not to be handled. So why couldn't we handle it? They asked him again. Jesus said, because of your lack of faith. For if I tell you, verse 20, if you have faith, you will say to this mountain, ah, verse 21, how be it? That this can commit not out. Except by fasting and praying. So that means, except you set your AK 47 <laughs> to 10,000 miles, you cannot kill this one. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? You see, if you use your hand and with a bullet, if you target an hand and you throw it back, it can kill an ant too. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. But a bullet in your hand cannot kill an elephant. <laughs> you will need a solid AK 47 to be able to bring an elephant down. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? He may kill a living thing <laughs> in the class of an ant, but not a living thing in the class of an everyman. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So you need a strengthened, a, a strengthened spirit to be able to fire it. And when you fire it that way, ladies and gentlemen, you see the elephant come down. So Jesus said, I'll be that this kind. The weight of the results you want requires fasting and praying. It requires that faith to be strengthened with it so that that weight of result can be delivered. Ladies and gentlemen, the season has come. And I stand as a prophet to unveil that season to you. That in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, many of you will start building houses right now. The season has come. In the name of Jesus, many of you will start buying properties in the name of Jesus. I said the season has come. And I stand as a prophet to declare it unto you. That all over the world, good things will start reporting in your life. Because the faith for heat has come in your life. Come on, tell somebody my faith is trending. So Jesus says, strengthen your faith to be able to get this kind of result through fasting and praying. And Jesus, the Bible says, he went to Gethsemane. And as he was approaching it, Jesus said, my spirit is willing, but my flesh is what? So weakness also set, ladies and gentlemen, into his faith. Weakness set into his life at this time. The Bible says he was in serious agony. He didn't want to die. Dear as I'm talking about, the man who has always been talking about the fact that I'm going to the cross, I'm going to destroy this temple, and in three days, I'm going to raise it up. I'm going to rise again. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. Now, this man came to that junction, ladies and gentlemen, and discovered that Obel Dalorum, Ojunu Malun Rock. He saw what the catcher I'm talking about. Jesus was weak. What did he do? He taught us the highest way of handling weakness of faith. <laughs> the Bible says he began to pray. Glory be to God. Come on, tell somebody, I have the antidote to the weakness of faith. <laughs> 
Luke chapter number 22, the Bible says from verse 41, and Jesus, after he left them, you know, and went a distance of a, a, a stone through, the Bible says he knelt down and he began to pray. And verse 42, he said, Father, he said, let this cup be taken away from me. No, no, not my will, but I will be done. And verse 43, an angel came to strengthen him. <laughs> Can you see? <laughs> that was when strength was downloaded. Now verse 44, the Bible says, being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. <laughs> he prayed more earnestly. And then, ladies and gentlemen, what did the prayer do? Did the prayer take the cup away? No. What the prayer did was, ladies and gentlemen, just strengthen him. He was the one that God strengthened. Ladies and gentlemen, the cup was not taken away. But he got strengthened above the agony of the cup. He got strengthened above the threat of the cup. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what is doing Mauru Mauru to you. I don't know that thing, ladies and gentlemen, that is making thee, ladies and gentlemen, frightened. That thing that is constituting a dread to your life. That thing that is lying to your mind. That you will never be able to escape even this cocoon of poverty. This confinement of lack and destitution. I got a goodness for you in the name of Jesus. You are rising in faith above that thing. I said, you are rising in faith above the fear. I say you are rising in faith above the anxiety. In the name of Jesus, the condition may not change, but your faith is getting strengthened. I'm not talking to somebody here. And when your faith is getting strengthened, ladies and gentlemen, that thing has lost its power to hurt you. Jesus came out from that place of prayer. And then he told his said, stop praying. He said, they are here. The hour has come for darkness and the powers thereof. And those people came. They said, Jesus, who do you seek for? They said, Jesus. He said, I am he. Yeah, 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 yeah. Peter brought out the sword, caught somebody's. He wanted to cut the hair. Nobody targets the hair with sword. It's not possible. Do you the bullet that scraped the hair of uh, what's it, Trump? Trump forever still says it's a miracle because nobody, somebody said it was staged. Who, who will allow? Who will allow? Who will allow his head to be used for staging? Bullet that can send you. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm talking about? That kind of thing can't be staged. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Now, listen, ladies and gentlemen, Peter can never be targeting the hair. It was the head. My head, yeah, dear, Oh, no, no, you God just saved that guy like Trump. <laughs> and Jesus still took the hair and fixed it back. He said, you here, let's go. Ah, that means it has lost its power, ladies and gentlemen, to constitute a fear to him anymore. He faced death with every strongest courage because he was coming out from the place. That means the faith is not strong. He said, I carry this thing. I, yeah, I can face it. Ladies and gentlemen, what is that thing that is belittling your faith? What is that thing, ladies and gentlemen, that is making thee fear every time? Just go to the place of prayer. The Bible says, I saw the Lord and he delivered me from all my fears. That means in the place, he said, I saw the Lord and he had me. Psalm 34 verse 4. That means he had me. Simply means seeking the Lord is talking about there. He's not talking about paying tight. He's talking about praying. He had me. That means I sought him in prayers and he what? He had me and delivered me from all my fears. Ladies and gentlemen, in the place of prayer, men rise above their fears. As in the place of prayer, men rise above, ladies and gentlemen, the economic fear that you will not be able to find food to eat tomorrow. I got a good news for somebody here. That spirit that is telling you that you will not be able to find food to eat tomorrow, that spirit is being put to shame in your life as I'm speaking right now. Because what you will hit at the end of the year, the Lord will provide you within the next three days. If that is you, I think that human should be the loudest in the house. Except I'm not called as a prophet. That is why that statement will not come to pass. I am speaking by the fire of the spirit of the living God. Within the next three days, somebody's miracle will be most abundant. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? It is all in the place of prayer. It got that strength from the place of prayer. So the place of prayer is a place where we are strengthened above our fears. That is the greatest advantage of praying. Now listen, ladies and gentlemen. After you are prayed and your faith and you, you are strengthened, your faith is training now. What do you do with this training faith? The next stage is that you begin to program your faith. Now, I have seen that a lot of believers don't understand the programming of faith. And therefore, they cannot take advantage of faith. A computer in your hand that has no program in it, ladies and gentlemen, is of no essence. <laughs> I don't know whether somebody understands what I'm talking about. I went to Dubai one time and I bought a computer. Now, the computer was cheap because it had no program, not, not even any operating system. So, the other time I'm talking, have you ever seen that kind of computer before without any operating system? So we brought the computer, and then, ladies and gentlemen, we got an expert who fixed everything, put all the system in place, put all the programs, installed everything. Now, that computer became the longest-serving computer in our office. The other time I'm talking about for a time, for a long time. 
Oh, yes, ladies and gentlemen. The guy came and installed everything. And that is why I don't give up on people, ladies and gentlemen. All you need, all some people need is just the right program to be installed in their life. The revelation of God's word can transform somebody else's life. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen. So don't give up on people. Just install the right program. Some people are empty when Christ brought them. Ladies and gentlemen, some people is just the operating system when Christ brought them. Some people maybe just the operating system and some what, you know, uh, program when Christ brought them. Ladies and gentlemen, when you download more on them, they can perform better. The performance of the computer is as dictated as the program at work it in. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So ladies and gentlemen, the revelation of Christ can transform any life and take that person to any level. So what are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? What are we saying, ladies and gentlemen? The computer has to have some programs. There is that for it to be able to function. Now, you see, whatever you make that you don't program, ladies and gentlemen, it can't function. If you make a robot now, they have to now program the robot. They have already done the programming, and then they install it in the program robot. The robot will perform exactly what you want that robot to do. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? If you want a robot to be cooking food, this and this and that, the robot knows how to cook rice, how to cook jollof rice, how to this, how to that. Do you understand what I'm talking about? When you speak to the robot, the robot goes and carries it out. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I was telling you about automation on Sunday. When you see an automated system, you say, hey, Alexa, hey, Google, perform this function. And then it goes and it performs that function exactly. Because there is a program. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, exactly the same way, ladies and gentlemen, our faith needs to be programmed. Many of us, we carry faith, but we are not good in the programming of faith. Therefore, faith has not been productive in many people's lives. The programming of faith, ladies and gentlemen, is the internalization of the structure that you want your faith to have to be able to achieve the result that you want to obtain. I repeat myself. It is the internalization of the structure you want your faith to have to be able to achieve the particular dream, the particular desire that you want to obtain. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? What am I trying to say? It is internal dealing first before external manifestation. What has not been internalized, ladies and gentlemen, can never be externalized. Please understand, a dealing you have not, ladies and gentlemen, conceptualized and established in your heart might be, ladies and gentlemen, a practical impossibility to obtain in your hands. What somebody said, what is too big for your heart is too big for your hand. And that's the truth. So the heart first before your hand second. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Now many people think faith is all about just the hand. Many just speak like parrot. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Oh yes, just the hand. Oh yeah, money fly to my hand. Money. No. When somebody says money flying to my hand, it is coming from a dead. Ladies and gentlemen, there is a loadedness that is propelling that utterance. Am I talking to somebody here? And then when that particular hot trance is released, it produces and generates that result in your hand. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So the heart first. Mark 11, Jesus was speaking, teaching on faith. After he caused the fig tree and the fig tree died, the Bible said Jesus, when he was pointed to the death of the fig tree from the root by, you know, the disciples, Jesus said, have the God kind of faith. Mark 11 verse 22, have the God kind of faith. And verse 23, Jesus said, for verily, verily, I say, honor you. Now, Jesus defining the God kind of faith that he was referring to. Now, he said, verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou wouldest say to this mountain, be ye therefore removed and cast into the sea, and thou shalt not doubt in your heart. The Lord said, there is somebody here, he said, you are feeling something like a power going through your body right now. The Lord said, I should let you know, it is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He said, it is there to accomplish something in your life. The Lord said, in the course of your dream, you begin to have encounters. Even right now, after now, you begin to have encounters. He says, the anointing that is setting in, Arato Sakata, is having a settlement right now in your spirit. It's taking over your soul and it's moving all over your body right now. It's the anointing of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Now verse 23, Mark 11, the Bible says, For verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou would have said to this mountain, Be ye therefore removed and cast into the sea, and thou shalt not doubt in your heart, but must believe that whatsoever you Whatever you say shall come to pass, thou shalt have what you say. So what is the internalization of faith here? It is you walking on your earth to be able to believe. Getting your heart to the state, ladies and gentlemen, a solid and concrete state of conceptualization of the matter you want to achieve and getting it to the place where it believes it is achievable and that not just achievable, but it's already achieved. 
Do you understand what I'm talking about? So there are stages. You, you, you picturize what you want to achieve, and then you believe this thing is achievable, and then you believe it is achieved. Now, how do you do that? Number one, picturize, uh, uh, picturization of what you want to achieve is a function of you seeing that thing. What you cannot see, God can give you. In Genesis chapter number 13 and verse 14, the Bible says, Abraham, now lift off your eyes. East, west, north, and south, for the land which you see will I give unto you. God is not under any obligation to give what a man cannot visualize. If somebody catch what I'm talking about, you must be able to visualize what you want. Now, how many of you, ladies and gentlemen, are woken up in the morning and you're already visualizing a new car in the front of your house? Oh, glory be to God. I'm, I'm talking to somebody here. Can you visualize that new car? Can you see that thing done? If somebody catch what I'm talking about, what you cannot visualize, ladies and gentlemen, cannot happen. It's, it's not possible. You got to visualize it that this thing is done. This thing, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, is already an established fact in my hand and in my life. Am I talking to somebody here? Let me tell you this. Oh my goodness, a big miracle happened today. Maybe uh, let me just continue. <laughs> now, is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Now, I visualize that thing before that thing came. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I could see that result before it came. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And then, you know, when I woke up in the morning, was it early hours or something? And then the devil was bringing that thing as a worry to me. That How is this thing going to be? I said, devil, you're going to see that. I'm not going to worry myself on this. I said, I bind the spirit of worry. I cast you out. I said, this thing is done right now. I said, I'm going to share a testimony at the end of the day. And I'm going to let you know that my God is God. <laughs> and that he has already done it. And ladies and gentlemen, Baba did it. <laughs> is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So when the devil sets the fear and the anxiety, it's because he doesn't want you to visualize it. You must visualize it, one, and see it as achievable. And then see it as achieved already. How do I see it as achieved already? In the sense that everything has been done by Christ now. The Bible says he has perfected those who has been sanctified forever. That is to say, ladies and gentlemen, he has provided for all your needs. He's not about to provide. In 2 Peter chapter number 1 and verse number 3, the Bible says, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain to life. All things. You need a house. It's part of the things that pertain to life. Ladies and gentlemen, you need some nice children. The Bible says, they are part of things that pertain to life. Ladies and gentlemen, you need a breakthrough internationally. Yes, it pertains to your life. The Bible says he has given unto you not 90% of things that pertain to life. The Bible says all things. That is to say 100%. Ladies and gentlemen, you have it given by Christ already. All things that pertain to life and godliness. That is to say there is nothing needed that is not already supplied. Oh, come on. Am I talking to somebody here? That's the reason the Bible said in 1 Corinthians chapter number 3 and verse 21 that all things are yours. Not they will be yours. They are now yours. Ephesians chapter 1. <laughs> Glory be to God, brother Paul, understanding this. Open it with a heart of thanksgiving. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse number 3. He said, thanks be unto God. Who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Now, that is to say, God is not about to bless anybody. That is to say, it is not about to be achieved. When somebody keeps saying something is about to happen, something is about to happen, I don't like listening to that kind of message. Don't put me in the box of who put me in the box of faith. For faith can see it on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you put me in the box of hope, I will end up with despondency, hopelessness. Because hope will never, ladies and gentlemen, achieve anything. The best of the voice of hope is that it's about to be done. You meet hope today, it's about to be done. You meet hope yesterday, it's about to be done. You meet hope tomorrow, it's about to be done. Everything hope keeps saying is that it's about to be done. Now, what gets is into my hand that is already done? Is the voice of faith. Hope is a goal setter. Thank God for that. But faith is the goal getter. He tells you it's already done. He tells you Christ has paid for him. He tells you, ladies and gentlemen, it's not yours. This is the receipt. He paid with his blood. Now, can you imagine me buying, going to a, ca a cash shop and I, I, I buy it and I come with the receipt and I give it to Pastor Sin. I said, Pastor look at it. I bought it with $30,000. It's yours. Now, and Pastor Sin now goes there and the gate man says, you're not going to enter. You're going to pull out the receipt on him. He said, look at it, man. This is Elizabeth's receipt that I paid for it. So let me ah. When the man sees it, he honors it. And then you go to the manager. He said, Yes, what is it? You pull out the receipt, receipt speaks for itself. I'm here to pick my car. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? I'm here to do what? To pick my car. When is it there are some there are some things the stores give abroad? What do you call it now? That you know, is it ticket? What I don't know what they call that thing. Card and um, shop voucher, shopping, shopping vouchers. When you have it, you go to the store. 
You can pick anything to the worth of that voucher. Am I right? You go to the cashier and then you just throw it on the table. He said, take it please and let me go with all my girls. Do you understand? Because somebody bought... Now, most of these vouchers are gift cards. I think you know that. Somebody buys it and sends it to you. Now, the person has paid for it. The fact that they came to you free doesn't say somebody didn't pay for it. Ladies and gentlemen, no free food in Freetown. Somebody paid for it, regardless of the father. That now, Jesus didn't pay for it, ladies and gentlemen, with dollars. Supposing he paid with dollars, we can say, okay, that's fine, man. I can let it go. Ladies and gentlemen, he didn't pay with dollars, he didn't pay in pounds. Ladies and gentlemen, he paid with his own blood. How then do you now say that it's not claimable? Somebody paid with his blood? Ladies and gentlemen, to say it's not claimable, ladies and gentlemen, is an aberration. I think everybody should be slapped for it for not believing it. Ladies and gentlemen, he paid with his blood. So it is already yours. So what do you do, ladies and gentlemen? You go, go to the store with total pride in your heart. Am I right? And say, I want to have this. Because it's already mine. Ladies and gentlemen, that's exactly what Jesus did. The Bible says, thanks be unto God who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings. God has no other right than to release all the blessings. Because he paid with his blood, with his life. He basically, yeah, no, he's on Ladies and gentlemen, he paid for it. So God released everything. So when you get to heaven today and you are looking for blessing, you are making a mistake. Heaven has been emptied. He has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Everything is here right now upon the saint. Ladies and gentlemen, there's nothing in heaven that the saints should go for as blessing. It's all here. I say it's all here. I say it's all here. I say it's all here. Come on, lift up holy hands and give him praise for the quality of the weight of blessings resting on your lives. Glory be to God in the highest. Is somebody catching what God is talking about? So when we are talking about the mystery of the release of faith, ladies and gentlemen, it's a mystery that conceptualizes that it is already done. So, and when you now see it already done, what do I do? Ladies and gentlemen, then ladies, you will say that your actions and your, your words, ladies and gentlemen, will change. <laughs> they are not just what the pastor puts in your mouth. You are saying after me, in Jesus' name. You are saying after pastor, but it's not coming from your heart. In Jesus' name, pantry is filled, but you know that you know that your heart is filled with doubt that there is no food in the pantry. In actual fact, you are roasting in fear as pastor is preaching. Please understand, ladies and gentlemen, i got a good news for somebody here. you got to internalize these things. Come on, tell somebody, i got to internalize these things. So the Bible said, in Genesis chapter number 27, the Bible said, and Isaac called his, two, his son by the name Esau. He said, go get me a venison that I may eat, so that my soul may bless you. The venison that I love, so that my soul may bless you. I wonder how many people go to see men of God empty-handed. <laughs> it's a terrible thing. <laughs> you know, because I, for instance, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't ask. Uh, you minister to some people, they will even share big testimony and say, God bless you. And they will even stretch hands to shake you. And I shake hands with them. God bless you, you can go. Because I know that you don't have to tell. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says, I bless those who bless you. There is a dimension of blessing you enter into when you bless them. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? When Saul was looking for his missing donkey, the Bible said in 1 Samuel chapter number 9, when his servant said, look, there is a prophet, oh, unless there is a seer in this city, can we inquire from him? The first thing Saul said was that, is there anything that we may give to the man? Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Is there anything that we can give to the man? He said, yeah. He said, I have some little whatever, whatever. Because you don't go to see them empty handed. There was a king, if you know that king, that his son was sick. And then he sent his wife to disguise to go and see a prophet. And the prophet had some visual impairment. Can you remember? I think that should be first kings, right? I think 13 or something. He told him, he said, take this to give to the man. It is an established custom. Because you are going to lay a demand on the anointing on them. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So what am I just trying to say? Ladies and gentlemen, what am I trying to say? <laughs> Sorry for that distraction. I think, I think it's a word for somebody. <laughs> Genesis 27. He said, go and get me venison that my soul may bless you. That is to say, my father will tell you that it's not anything for now. I think blessing here. Yeah. Get me something so that original blessing may not come just from my mouth, the buccal cavity, the biological compartment come out, but it can be coming from my soul, the bottom of my inner being. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So the blessing I want to release, I want it to come from my inner faculty. That's what he's saying. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever comes from the inner faculty, you don't doubt it. He placed the blessing on him, the brother brought his own food. That that's on Jacob. The Esau now brought his own food. The man said, ah. The Bible said, and Isaac trembled exceedingly when he discovered that he has placed the blessing on the wrong person. <laughs> to him, a wrong person, but to God, the right person. 
Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? The brother said, my brother, my father, have you only one blessing? Bless me too now. Just delete the thing. Just say, I cash out the blessing I've pronounced before. Oh yeah, come, let me give you the original one. No, no. The father said, I have blessed him and indeed he shall be blessed. Ah, because the thing came out from his innermost what? That is a man. When he was releasing it, ladies and gentlemen, his heart was there. If his heart was not there, he would quickly cancel it. He would release another one on the other brother. He said, no, he said, I have made him your Lord. Ah, he said, I have made him the Lord of all his brethren. He said, you will, when he began to bless the, uh, Israel, he said, you will serve your brother. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He said, even Isaac trembled exceedingly because his innermost being came out. Ladies and gentlemen, can you get your innermost being to the point where you believe what you're about to say? That, look, nothing can change this thing I'm saying. That's why at times I say, I say, accept another brother. That's when this thing will not come. You know what you're talking about? Your innermost being is carried along in the utterance you are releasing. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So this is the biggest aspect of it. The programming aspect. You need to program your inner being. And the word of God is the best instrument to program it. Well, do you understand what I'm talking about? You get to the point where you believe that this scripture is true. There is no lie in it. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? When we went to buy the house last year, I told Pastor, I said, let's go. I said, Pastor, you will see all that as we start moving now, a miracle will happen and the money will come. Did I not tell you? I, I said, you will see how. Because my innermost being is fully, how can you be going to go and be pricing as well? You know, like what I'm about to when you don't have the money. Ladies and gentlemen, I said, you will see how this miracle will happen now. The innermost being is, when we were to buy the things in the house, I said, Brother, yeah, let's go to Cash and Carry. Or whatever they call it. Uh, what's the name? What's, what's, what's the, the one beside Cash and Carry on, on Allen? LG. We got there, we, I bought all their best. All their best. I said, yeah, give me this. They brought the Onyibo man. They saw it. I said, yes. I, when they, I said, they said, oh, Pastor, pick this kind of AC. This normal one. I said, no. They said, just put this gla black glass AC. Only AG has that you know, patent right for black glass AC. I said, just put this one in the sitting room where visitors can see, and all others, rooms and, uh, you know, uh, all, uh, all uh, other rooms and dress, you, you put this other one there. I said, no. I said, this other one that you're talking about, the, the money to buy it, I don't have. The glass one, the money to buy it, I don't have. So let me now, Kukuma, whatever is on the way is what the faith will buy. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So I bought everything black glass. Now, the price of black glass is like double or triple that of the other one. I said, just put everything there. I got home. I slept. I woke up. In the morning, they said, Pastor, one man is looking for you. Gave him a prophecy. The thing came to pass. I said, so he has him for your account. And they transferred all the money. I never spoke with the man. I didn't do anything. God is my witness. And all the money just came in like that. The next morning, I said, but I don't say, you will see as you buy this thing, you will see how the money will come. Let's go. Because in my mind, I could see. Now, if you can't see it in your mind, they will say, take this other option. To be honest with God, is your witness. You will, you will go for it. It's, after all, it also blows cold. So it's just for the house to be, to be cold. But God is using that situation to do what? To test whether you are in faith. In my mind, it is established. That this is what I want. We got to where they were selling freezer. They said this one is the big. I said that's the one. The girl that I want. And the man who is pointing does not. Did not have any money in his pocket. Ladies and gentlemen, but my mind could see it done. In that Jesus paid for it, and all things are mine. I only came here to collect my right. <laughs> Talking to somebody. Did somebody catch what God is talking about? So you see, your inner must be must be programmed. And when it is well programmed, then you begin to see effect. Look at it. Look at it. In Matthew chapter 12, Jesus was making a wonderful teaching on this. Jesus said, starting from verse number 34, Jesus said, how can you brood of vipers, <laughs> being evil, bring forth good things? He said, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth what? Speaks. Now, in I went to verse 35. That's verse 34. Matthew 12. Verse 35. He said, a good man out of the good treasures of his heart bringeth forth good things. Now, you see, how does he bring it forth? Speaking. How can you breed brood of vipers? You know, bring forth good things. Do you understand what I'm talking about? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So he's talking about you bring it forth through speaking. 
for and thou shalt have what you say, Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, and he said that what you say that you will have is actually coming from the well of your heart. Now, how can you being evil bring forth good things? So that is to say, if your heart is bad, if the state of the heart is vacant, don't let me deceive you. The man cannot say anything productively to produce any miracle. No, he can't yield any miracle. Do you understand? So it all starts from the programming of the heart. The heart must believe that Jesus paid for this thing and this thing is mine. And all things are mine. Ladies and gentlemen, and then the heart takes the step that miracles will happen. God will meet me at the point of my need. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? And then when the heart believes that, ladies and gentlemen, every other thing is easy. When you are speaking, you will not be speaking down. I remember that day when the, it was the seller at Eji that called me behind, Peter Pastorson. He said, don't pick this. This one will be too expensive. I mean, people don't put this one in. I said, I'm not people. <laughs> I'm not people. I'm, <laughs> I'm God's son. I said, this is what I want. Ha. When they saw the list, they had to go and call the white man out. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because all the best of LG I picked. All their best. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And I said, because even the money for the poorest, I did not have. You will be, you'll be stupid to not go for. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So please understand, ladies and gentlemen, as I was speaking those things, everything came to pass. Everything came to pass. They said, when will you pay? I said, by tomorrow. I was too sure that the money will fly into my hands. I did not speak to anybody. I still repeat it on the surface of the heart. I just slept and woke up. I was still in sleep when the transaction for money took place. I had not even woken up. I was still in bed when all the money came in. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So, what am I just trying to say? The, my heart was set that near Allah said, Mumbo Hassan Wokini. How will it be? Don't ask me. <laughs> Do you understand? That means. The statement I made was coming from where? From the heart. So ladies and gentlemen, you just need to program your heart. When your heart is programmed this way, then miracles happen. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, now faith is the substance of things so forth. That means there is something you want to achieve. That is why I say you must also conceptualize it. Number two, you must see it achievable. And number three, you must see it achieved already. Then when you see it achieved, when you are talking, ladies, if I give Pastor Sin that receipt, do you think he will now be, if you ask the Pastor Sin, do you have a car? Do you think he will tell you he doesn't have a car? Even with the receipt in his hand. Knowing that Pastor does not lie, for Pastor to have given me this receipt, it means that he has paid. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. Do you think you ask him, Pastor Sin, do you have a car? And he will say he does not have a car. Answer me now. He will tell you he does what? He only needs to change the receipt to a physical car. That's all. That means the process of it. That's all. Ladies and gentlemen, do you believe it has been paid for? Before you still keep saying it. So the moment you believe it, then ladies and gentlemen, it's done. Proverbs chapter number 4 and verse 23. Guide your heart with all diligence. For out of you commit all the issues of life. Every issue of life. So if it is not rooted in the heart, ladies and gentlemen, it cannot manifest in the physical. That is programming your inner man. Now, the last part, ladies and gentlemen, in a few minutes, we'll be done. The last part, ladies and gentlemen, now is releasing that faith through your utterance and actions. Releasing that faith through your utterance and actions. Now, when I have believed in my heart that this thing is done, ladies and gentlemen, I now need to release it through my utterance. I need to release it through my, through my faith, and through, I mean, through my, through my steps. Ladies and gentlemen, faith is a speaking faith. Whatever you are not speaking, ladies and gentlemen, is most difficult, ladies and gentlemen, to achieve. At least there must be, ladies and gentlemen, an expression, whether in action or in speaking. <laughs> Any faith that is not expressed is a dead faith. Do you understand? Whether in words or by action, ladies and gentlemen, there must be an expression of what your heart believes is done. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? It is that expression that pulls the trigger for the bullet to be released. That means the physical manifestation of the result. A.H. Harlem was praying for a man, a praying for a woman. A Harlem prayed. And even the A Harlem burst into tears, praying for the woman. They call, I don't know the name of that disease. The body turns to a rock. The whole leg of the woman, A Harlem was touching. He said, he said, I've never seen anything this worse. He said, This thing is like a rock. And he himself just burst into tears and started crying. Now, he will have a long key in front of him we're praying for the blind. I was watching him all were healed. And then they rolled this stretcher in front. And he saw this case and he started weeping. Ah! 
And then he finished praying for the woman. He said, Lord, heal this woman. Lord, this. He laid hands. And after that, he had and said, when I pray for the sick, I like them do something. Because he, that is what, ladies and gentlemen, makes the miracle happen. And I told the woman, I said, Mama, I'm going to pull you up. He said, but the whole body is stiff like rock. He said, I'm going to pull you up. He said, you just take one step and God will take the rest. Ah, they carry that woman up. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It's like carry. And then the woman that could not walk, he said, just take one step. Just, just try. Just the, the woman took the first step. Yes, the second one. They were holding her. You know, shook the first person, shook them off on the right hand, shook them off on the second hand. The woman started running everywhere. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Now, as at the time he finished praying, nothing has happened. But it is when action entered into it, the express. Do you understand what I'm talking about? That manifestation started. So until expression happens, physical expression, whether in words or by action, until it happens, ladies and gentlemen, don't expect result. To say I'm believing God for you are only you are only deceiving yourself. Do you understand? You are only deceiving yourself when there is no action, when there is nothing. The Bible says in James chapter number two verse seventeen, faith without without action is what is dead, being alone. So if I say uh, I'm only praying, I'm praying, I'm praying. Many of you are praying for a car. You never go to a car shop to say you want to buy a car. It won't come. I told you I was praying for chairs. And I prayed and prayed and prayed. Baba, cha, baba. What the Holy Ghost said, let me have, have this man's ignorance. He said, continue praying. That chair will never come. He said, for you know what to do and you do it not. I said, yeah. And this was about weeks after. So I went to where the city room I said, cha, come in the name of Jesus. And I went to sleep. This was in my whole house. Hilarious and gentlemen. Next day, Pastor said, we are going to buy chairs. He said, yes, sir. We went to go and buy. When we got to where we buy chairs, we saw different chairs. Pastor said, I didn't have the money. But he said, Pastor, since you don't have the money, let's go and buy these ones for 200000 another. We saw one, they said, hit million. I said, that's the one I want. <laughs> that's the one I want. <laughs> I said, Pastor said, 200000 I don't have. 8 million, I don't have. Whatever is on the way of faith is what faith carries. Let me go for the best. <laughs> the I'm talking about. And then we were going and we left. I got home. The next, I said, I'm coming to pay on Monday. The next day, that was on a Saturday. The next day, my son called me. He said, he gave me a prophecy that in Abuja, a contract will come out for me. I said, yes. He said, it has come out, sir. And they are paid. Ah, I said, they are paid. I said, okay, that's fine. So what are you talking about? I want to send um, some things to you, sir. And this and this. Ah, for you. I have a cat. <laughs> I have what? So on Monday I got there, I said I want to pay. The lady started looking at me, I started laughing. He said, ah. I said on Saturday when I said I was coming to pay, you were laughing. He said, no, nah, I'm here. The lady was just looking at me, was shaking her head, her head like this. Eh? So if I tell you that I bought this thing by faith, eh? the bus that we bought one day, we went to, we went to go and buy bus. I said, well, let's go and buy bus. And then we went to Metro Cars there. And I went around the bus. I said, I said, if I pay tomorrow, will you put plate number? He said, yes. I said, okay, I'm coming to pay. Okay? And I got to, I said, God, I, I, I got to my house. I said, well, I, I have got to make my house. <coughs> I said, you have to pay. I told them, this tomorrow, I'm coming to what? To pay. And then, somebody just said, Pastor, somebody's waiting to see you, sir. I said, let the person come in. <laughs> he said, yes. He said, I had a message. If I come from online, I said, I had a message that um, it's good to give that so 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 when you are expecting a miracle, I said yes, it's true. He said so. I came to see you, you know, for clarity. I said ah, you are in the best place. This, no doubt it. This is the best soil that ever exists. Nothing low me than this place. Just drop the thing here. Straight. Total encouragement. The person brought the first check sign. Brought the second check sign. Brought the third check sign. I collected all the millions. Went cleared the thing. The next day I went to buy the box. When I when 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 after I finished praying and the boss came and I told the guy who sold the boss, I said the day I came, yesterday that I came, I said we didn't have the money, sir. I said, but this, the guy had to come to our prayer meeting. He said, Yeah. Do people still work like this? Do miracles happen like this? Ladies and gentlemen, we have been using mouth to talk about boss since. Listen, we had one boss that was baby baby boss. Anytime we wanted to kickstart that bus, grandma would have to go and sit down by grandpa because the sound was like helicopter sound. The thing would disturb and vibrate the whole house. Are <laughs> <laughs> you guys what I'm talking about? We, were, we went to Ella one day, the bus stopped on, on Tom Miller. I told her, I said, You are with your faith, just get me back. Let me go home. I left him there on Tom Miller at night with the bus. I, that guy has served. <laughs> Is somebody what I'm talking about? They had to look for how to tow the bus. So at that point, I said, Lord, enough is what? 
until enough is until somebody gets to that point i'm telling you ladies and gentlemen you won't stir up your faith i don't know whether you have got you to that point now we are about to enter into prayers enough is enough must be reached as a point in your life this thing must stop is somebody catch i'm talking about immediately i entered that realm ladies and gentlemen we went for the boss and the, i said so this is what i would have done for the past few months that this other boss has been embarrassing us mechanic working on it every day it only took me less than 24 hours for all these things to happen Ah, ladies and gentlemen, the fact that there is a destitution in a believer's life does not say it's God, it's not a supplying God. It's just that that believer has not known the ways of God. <laughs> if somebody catch what I'm talking about, if you understand these ways, Baba has already supplied all that you ever need. So ladies and gentlemen, what am I saying? As we run up, God is speaking to somebody here tonight. You need to give expression to your faith. Now, expression through your words is very important because your words are powerful. Look at it. In Ephesians chapter number 4 verse 29, the Bible says, Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth, but that which is good for edification. It says so that your hearers may find grace in your words. Let no corrupt communication come out from your mouth, but that which is good for edification, so that your words may minister grace unto your hearers. Now verse 30, he said, he said, do not grieve the Holy Ghost. Now, do you see the connection between your words and the Holy Spirit? I will show you. Let no corrupt communication come out of your mouth. There is no way it won't come out if your heart is evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. That's why programming your mind is the first thing. Your heart is the first thing. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And then when it is there, that is all you will be saying. You will be telling them, I'm coming to pay tomorrow. Because you have already seen it done. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Now, let no corrupt communication. Program your mind. Don't corrupt simply means evil. That means what is not, what is not in agreement with what your destiny wants, what your heart desires. Don't let it come out of your mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, say what is consistent with your desire, more especially with the scriptures. Say the word of God is the purest that you can ever speak. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, he said, let it not come out of your mouth. Now, he now went forward to say, he said, he said, he said, he said, but that which is good for edification, that means good for building. That which can, ladies and gentlemen, bring results. That can bring, ladies and gentlemen, great things. He said, so that your words may minister grace to your hearers. Now, that grace there is not means, it doesn't mean niceness. So because that is what the body of Christ has understood as grace. That's not what he's talking about. So that, you know, what you are saying, you know, doesn't hate the hairs. That's not what the Bible is saying. They just feel good. They feel cool. You are saying some nice things, some things that can just, you know, I've seen a lot of preachers, you know, preachers preach and they only preach, they are so liquor preachers. When you see some success motivators or some, you know, preachers, when they preach, you know, uh, uh, I don't want anybody to just, to condemn me, just hold my hands and walk me through. Everybody's just screaming, yeah, just walk me through. But then they finish preaching, no scripture, what they are saying. Just hold my hands and walk me through. What are you talking about? What is, do you understand what I'm talking about? Somebody's going through demon, he said, just hold my hand and walk me through. What, what's, do you understand what I'm talking about? So, you see, that's not, they are just nice things. It's not nice things that, that God is talking about. What he's talking, I will show you what that grace means. That grace, you see, is connected to the Holy Spirit. Verse 30. In Luke chapter 4, the Bible says Jesus entered into the temple. And then verse 18, he took the, he took the scroll. And he opened to the place where Isaiah said, that's Isaiah chapter 60. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach good tidings to the meek. Jesus read it out. And then verse 21, he closed the book. And he sat down. Verse, that was all he read. And he sat down. He said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your eyes. And he sat down. Now, verse 22, Luke chapter 4. The Bible says, and they marveled at the gracious words that came out of his mouth. Somebody is just telling you the spirit is on me. That means what he's saying is spirited. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So, gracious words is in connection with the Holy Spirit. That's the reason why Jesus said in John chapter 6, verse 63, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirits and they are life. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I'm speaking from the depth of the spirit. So grace means the operations, the totality of the operations of the spirit around the man producing physical results. That's what grace is. Let your words, ladies and gentlemen, command, ladies and gentlemen, the word of the spirit around you. Let it command, ladies and gentlemen, under the megabyte of the spirit, the word of angels around you to bring in the results into your hands. That's what he's saying. In Psalm 45, the Bible says, verse 2, the Bible is talking about Jesus. The Bible says, he said, grace is poured on your lips. That's the reason why you could see Jesus speaking. The Bible says, they, they looked at him and they saw gracious words. It's not nice things. No, 
They saw the, the megabyte of the spirit oozing out of his mouth. How many of us can speak that way? You only speak that way when you are praying. You speak that way when your heart is programmed. And when it's coming out, it's coming out in the authoritative strength of the spirit. I told you how the ministry of the spirit is connected to prayers. So it will just be oozing out of your... There is nothing in this world that will not respond to what you're saying. Mama is here today. She was just speaking to me upstairs. And you know what she said? She had a dream. Somebody attacked her in her leg. And then she came to see me. Pastor, this, and I lay hands on her and said, I reverse it back on the sender. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment we reverse it, an attack came on the leg of the person. We know the person who sent it. The other I'm talking about. We've been praying on, on I mean, we've been talking and praying on, 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 on some certain things about that person. Now, you now went to go and attack her spiritually. I said, come now, mama. I said, I physically speaking, an attack came on the leg of that woman. They flung her to the hospital to be doing op operation on that leg. She cannot come out from that time again. She's a party, party goer. She could not come out again. And she attacked mama so that her husband can marry somebody else. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Moved in that direction. Ladies and gentlemen, the husband of this woman, now when she saw that Oti was paralyzed, he went to go and marry another person. That means all the evil she planned for her was reversed by an utterance. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? That is another mama came to me today. You know what? Somebody gave her a cloth to paralyze her. Mama is watching. Mama, God bless you. She said the moment she caught the cloth, a side of her started going through the pains for paralysis. And the woman called me. I said, Mommy, am I watching? I let's pray. And I reversed the wickedness on the head of the wicked. Ladies and gentlemen, Mama came to me today by Saturday. The person that gave her the cloth went straight on stroke. Paralyzed that part of her. The, you see, there is an utterance that carries an arrow and fires it back. When you are speaking by the Spirit, results follow. <laughs> That's what they are saying, Daoga. We can see there is grace in what you are saying. There is the oppression of the Spirit accompanying your words. Ladies and gentlemen, this is all about prayer that stands at the effective foundation for the operations of your faith. Rest to your feet and give him praise. Give him praise and exhort him. Let's thank him for what you have had tonight. Oh, worship him. Exhort his holy name. I lift my hands to say I love you I everything to me and I exalt you and I exalt your name and I exalt your name oh Lord I just want to praise you, Lord. I lift my hands to say. all the praise for all that you've heard. Your life can never be the same again. Everybody begin to pray in the spirit right now. There is a mighty outpouring of the power of the spirit of God all over this place right now. Oh, reto zato ya kabu shata ya kaba zata ya kaba. Male rodos te sopra le karados te sopra le. I'm seeing the effective operations of the spirit being poured on your lips. It's coming on your lips right now. Capacity to command the world of the spirit. Le pale rodos te sopra le gerota zokada. There is a baptism of fire that is coming on your lips right now. Lekote zopra ligorosta la kata diato zepro le kato zakata. And I, and I exalt your holy name. 
Rosata, Quire, Cabarata Zacata, Malero Rosata, Larate, Exalt Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. And I Fire of the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray, Lord. Let your fire come on my mouth. Let your fire, your fire, your fire, your fire. Hey, the fire of the Spirit. Marata zakataya, eriata zataya gaba. Marato zatadi gaba zatadiya. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 6, And I saw the angel took even a sponge, and it carried even a coal of fire, and it touched my tongue, it touched my lips. Somebody begin to pray, let the coal of fire rest on my tongue. That lepra dear, my word is a commander of the world of the spirit. Rate zakata, that my hotters, ye rata zakata, begin to command, ye kekradika toya, rate zakata, the angels of God, Malepaza, my hotters, we convert them to flames of fire. Rate zataya nakadaya, eh, yakato, meriata, 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 rakato zapra likato zakrakata, maleta zopra likato zakrakata gaboya. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm hearing enough. I'm hearing enough is enough. What is that matter you are tired of tonight? Begin to decree right now with that fire on your lips. Matter change. I command you in the name of Jesus the Christ. Rata Zakaba Rata za. Change now in the name of Jesus. Somebody begin to pray. The power of God is moving all over this place right now. Matter change. <laughs> Yay! Rakoba Brolika to Zatradika Para. Every stagnant situation move now. Every paralyzed depart. In the power of the Spirit. Of fruitfulness and destiny, I command you to vacate my life. Somebody pray. Yarato zeke kradi kada. Relia, Rani, Nana Natai, Reka, Ribo Zatai. Le pali rodek soke po prali kapara kata zakata. Meli pare po se pro makapoya. Every matter, troubling matters of life, I command you to change in the name of Jesus. Jesus told that storm, he said, be still. Can you command it right now? The same fire is in your mouth. Can you command it now? By the power of the Spirit, every ranging storm of life. Storm sees in every home. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, I will pray. The storm of insanity, I command you to cease. The storm of poverty, I command you to cease. The storm of barrenness, I command you to cease. The storm of destitution, I command you to cease. The storm of stagnation, I command you to cease. The storm of frustration, I command you, cease in the name of Jesus. You are going to pray. Every arrow the enemy targeted against me, back to sender. Now listen, a woman was with me. A woman was with me. Um, was he on, was he on, on, on Thursday now? Last week, Thursday. That was about six days ago. Six or seven days ago. This woman went to deliver in America. And the enemy busted open her womb. The womb tore open and the baby came out of the womb. While she was still pregnant. Now when the baby has come out, how can she deliver? And it was meant for her death. So the husband called me. And I told the woman, I said, ah, there's a danger I could see. The woman did not even know. So the woman went to the hospital and they says, Ma, we are sorry to tell you this. The baby is out of the womb. This and this and this and that. For the baby to die and the woman to die, 
That is internal bleeding because they are torn open the womb. Vessels are broken already. Do you understand what I'm talking about? And as I was praying, I saw a woman. I said, I see a woman, man. And the Lord said that this woman will die. He said, an attack will come on that woman for doing this for you. So no, they said nothing pleases them than your death. They will die. So I reversed that evil. I said, the Lord said, before you come back, he said, you will meet that situation on ground. Ladies and gentlemen, this woman delivered. This woman got a passport for her son. And they got on the plane and came back. Probably everything within one month or one and a half months. By the time they came back, her hack enemy lost a child straight. Died. Stand. The other I'm talking about, a day or so to are coming, the, the person died. Now, please understand. The enemy said, your destiny will not be settled. And you are looking at them. You won't settle them themselves. The Bible said, plead my cause with those that strive against me. He said, re, 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 Father, he said, contend with those that contend with me. Please understand. You are going to cry on God right now. I return every arrow of the enemy back on their heads. Anybody that says I will not progress, let them not progress. Whatever darkness they are sending against me, I, I multiply it and send it back on them. Somebody begin to pray. Matasa take pro makapaya. He said, "Vengeance is mine, and I will take it." Jehovah le paridos te se prodigaraya. Everybody that said my life will not be settled, Father, today move in your power. I said, move in your power right now. Move in your power right now. Move in your power right now. Daddy, unsettle those who want to unsettle me. Father, finish those who want to finish me. In the name of Jesus, let the arrows be sent back on their heads. And then they will never find peace that trouble my peace. Ratesa kataya la barate. Jehovah. Rakepo zabra li kataya kepo prani kata. They look for my paralysis. Let them be paralyzed. Karata zebra li kata zeke parate. Jehovah. Jehovah. Every part of wickedness that the enemy has prepared for me. Father, in the name of Jesus, I break it and scatter their heads. I break it and scatter their lives. Let their arrows return on their heads. Let their weapons fashion right now walk against them. By the power of God, in the name of I deploy angels against them. I deploy angels against them. I deploy angels. Those that say you will not marry, I deploy angels against them. Let the fire of God be against them. Every kingdom of darkness, principalities and powers, every devil that say your life will not be settled, let the fire of God right now consume them. In the name of Jesus, by the power of the Spirit of God, in the name of Jesus, there is holiness and deliverance in the name of Jesus. And let the children of God possess possess their possessions by the power of the spirit of god in the name of jesus oh the power of god move now move now move all over this place thank you jesus for moving we give you all the praise in jesus mighty name have we prayed ask the lord your desires. The Bible says, whatsoever thing you desire when you pray, believe it is given. Can somebody talk to God right now? Father, I know that you have already blessed me with you, so Lord, I claim these things. Begin to claim them right now. Begin to claim them, believing that Christ has already died and paid for it, and he didn't pay with dollars, he didn't pay with pounds. He paid with his life and with his blood. Somebody begin to claim it. He cannot, there is an agenda maybe realer than this. For somebody to pay with his life and blood, begin to claim everything that is yours. Leo Parado Zatra Kapa Zatra Disto Satoya Gabar. Ato Zekota Shoka Parato Setali Kaparato Zopra Diskata. Leo Parada Zopra de Karadish. Oh, yes, Lord. Oh, yes. For you are glorious. Lord said healing is taking place right now. Receive your healing. You came with any infirmity right now. Check it. Somebody has just been healed in the in the knee area. Somebody's leg has just been healed. Check it right now. The power of God has just healed somebody's leg right now. 
That pain is gone. Even on your toes is gone by the power of the Holy Ghost. Mighty hand of his power is moving all over this place right now. For you are glorious. Can we begin to worship him for answered prayers? Holy communion being served. Upon the throne. of you, the Lord said, you shall succeed, you will not fail. And you need assistance to carry out this thing. I see the power of God generating the assistance. Please come and share your testimony. It is already to all. And on to you, I lift my voice to say. we take this to remember that you have paid for everything. And we thank you for paying for our healing, for our welfare, for our well-being, and for our prosperity. Thank you, Jesus. With a heart of thanksgiving, please break the bread and take it. Thank you, Jesus. And I'm hearing a song in the spirit. And the Lord is telling me this is what has happened. Anytime angels begin to sing, something has been accomplished. Remember when Jesus was born. Luke chapter 2, the Bible says, The shepherds have watched over their flocks at night. The angel came to declare unto him that, Born unto you in the city of David is the king and the Lord of lords. And suddenly there appeared a host of heaven, and they were singing, Glory to God in the highest, and goodwill to mankind on the earth. Can you remember? Now, that song lets you know that something has landed. The goodwill of God has landed. And what I'm hearing in my spirit. is a song of thanksgiving. It's a song of praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just give him praise. Give him praise with your own song. Give him praise with your own language. Just worship him right now. I'm hearing the song of praise in my spirit. I'm hearing the song of thanksgiving. The Lord said that desire that you express unto him, those desires have been granted. Just give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. With a heart of thanksgiving, give him praise. Give him praise. And you can take the wine which is the blood of Jesus. Take it with a heart of thanksgiving. you are just lift up your hands I want to bless you Father thank you for what you have done let more go with them multiply it in every hand Jesus take your seat as the choir they are singing I want you to begin to package your offerings right now we have the POS machines at the back for you to use the POS if you want to use that the account of the ministry has been projected right now for those who want to make transfers you are writing a check the name of the ministry's Divine Glory Christian Church as it is at the back of your envelope. Please sign against all alterations and you may please put your telephone number at the back of your check in case we need to contact you. 
God bless you. Package your package your tithes. Package your first fruit. Package your your offerings. Package your special thanksgiving seed on the go. Blessing him for what he has done to us. Everybody lift it up right now. We can rise with it and lift it up. Hallelujah. 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 These offerings are blessed. Prayer, the foundation for effective faith, has been a blessing to us, right? Uh, glory be to God in the highest. Uh, I see great things happening through your hands. I see you releasing your faith, and mighty things are going to happen through it. In fact, they are happening already. Glory be to God. Please, on Sunday, invite people. Invite your friends, invite your loved ones. I'm telling you, there is the richness of the presence of the Spirit promised in this place. It's going to be so awesome. People's lives will be so blessed. Please bring them. Mountains will go. Valleys will be filled. Rough places will be made straight. And by the anointing of the Holy Spirit of God, testimonies will erupt like never before. I tell you about the Spirit of God. That is going to be so awesome. So that you don't regret not inviting them. Please invite your neighbors. It's not a good thing for miracles to be happening and then you keep it to yourself. Tell them. Because <laughs> they supply. Anyway, what happens in your life between now and Sunday will make you invite many. <laughs> Till I see you again. I love you so much with the love of Christ. God bless you. Good night. We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers, and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers 80 706 and 80 228 1839 or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms facebook.com forward slash DGCCINTL Instagram at DGCCINTL On YouTube, search Divine Glory Christian Church Our Twitter handle is at DGCCINTL Stay blessed!